Ireland are marching towards a grand slam. Wales, an ex inexperienced group of promising youngsters. That's the narrative. Is there any way Wales can win in Dublin on Saturday? Let's find out. Hello, amateurs, and welcome to our Six Nations series. And I've got everyone's favourite pundit, Elko, with me today. Elko, how are you? TT, I'm good. The fallow week is gone. Useless. Pointless. We're back into six months. Let it roll. Yeah, I missed you last, last week, mate. It's good to see you. Before we jump into selections, how, how do you feel about the um, this this fixture overall? You know, what are your what are your general thoughts? Um, mm, well, I, look, speaking frankly and honestly, I think if Ireland play to their potential, they're not going to lose the game. But there's always an if in the Six Nations. You just don't know. Um, it's hard to go back to back Grand Slam, um, and that's what Ireland have put on the target list to do this year but you know Gatland uh, coming back to Dublin um, always has a bit of an edge and I would say they'll lap up being underdogs um, and they'll they'll want to prove a point against the the world's number two team um, and and you know maybe nick a win in Dublin let's see yeah it's going to be fierce I have no doubt about that um, absolutely so let's get into these selections we'll start with Ireland the forwards and i mean it's pretty much back to uh back to where we started in terms of the championship and the forward selection what are you picking out from this selection alco what what gets your interest yeah well, well um sort of the the bench is interesting and we'll talk about that in a second but kind of i mean this is a very powerful pack right um <laughs> They could have picked. They could have made a couple of changes or, or not brought back people in. But obviously, uh, Manny's back in and captain inside. Um, Van der Fleer is starting, which I think is interesting. Uh, I think how Wales would probably want to want to want to sort of get into this is is by disrupting. We've said this every time, but kind of disrupting our speed of ball and trying to get turnovers with with Rafael. And we've seen how good he is in, in the first couple of rounds of of the championship. And he will be coming in with you know on form and hungry to prove people there. Uh, um, certainly the Irish people wrong. So, um, but then you know you've got you've got Ryan on the bench and you've got that 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 second row there. It's, it's got a nice feel to it, a nice balance. You've got a very powerful man in McCarthy and you've got Byrne on the line out. So, I think what Ireland will need to do is to play a possession game um, and um, you know uh, put a lot of pressure on Wales in the line outs. I think they, if they continue with their line out consistency. Wales could be in for a very long day because this pack has got the ability to win a lot of ball and then driving more and then the, you know Bundy at ten to to take things up um, will be will be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. The only slight question mark I had on it was whether um, Finley Bealham might keep his place at tight head, uh, but obviously Furlong's come back in and we'll, that becomes even more interesting when we get to the bench. So we'll take a look at that then. But let's move on to the backs and. This was exactly as I thought it would be. What were your thoughts, Elko? Yeah, I think, well, probably worst kept secret. I think with Frawley starting at fifteen, I think that was that was always going to happen, particularly with him not going back to play for Leinster um, at the weekend. Um, so yeah, it's it's a no brainer. He's played there before for Leinster. It'll be his first Six Nations start there, um, and we'll see how he goes. Uh, Henshaw's done enough there to keep his to keep his place. Um, I think what the bench will show us is that I mean, Ringrose. We, everyone was told by Ringrose getting back. I think if he was anywhere fit, I think they would have would have stuck him on the bench or played him. Um, I think they. My only fear is um, is uh, we are really susceptible to an injury crisis here because a couple of injuries. I mean, he's gone for a six-two bench again, which is again Farrell doing what Farrell wants, and I love it. And he's back in his team, um, and you've got a you've got a you know. Back their fitness and their and their injury profile so far have been unbelievable. The S and C crew have done a fantastic job, and they they seem to be able to get through. But you know, someone goes over on their ankle or or something happens, we could be in a complete mess. And um, we've got no back three cover. So if Frawley gets injured, for instance, what do they do? Um, and I presume um, you could either bring uh, Murray on at nine and and move uh, Gibson Park back into the back three somehow. Probably more likely, I think they they'd shift Henshaw back to fifteen where he's played. Stick McCluskey in at twelve and push Aki out um, or one another. But if something like that happens um, and a hungry Welsh team are, are in it towards the end, then that's my only fear for the weekend. TT, um, 
But uh, look, this back line is class, right? Um, I love I love that he's back there, Crowley, to stay at 10. I think that's the absolutely right thing to do because there was chat maybe of shifting him back and bringing Byrne into 10. But I think um, Farrell, again, is, is uh, that's genius. Um, and Nash um, has recovered from injury to, to start on the wing as well. So it's a fairly settled team. He's probably gone for the least amount of changes possible, um, which is pretty much one um, injury force, uh, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see us playing a very loose game at all on, on Saturday. I think we're going to play it fairly tight, as I said, particularly with a 6-2 bench. Um, I think we're going to look to overpower these Welsh boys and and, um, and uh, probably still score a lot of tries, but maybe not not as open play as um, one would hope. Yeah. Picking up on Henshaw, I, I would go further than saying he's done enough to keep his place. I think over the two games, he might well have been Ireland's best back. I think he's done so many great carries, so many good creative things, been defensively superb. I think he might, you know, across the two games have been, in, uh, like I say, Ireland's best back. And then Aki coming back in for McCloskey. And again, this is just a very, it's a symptom of having a really strong squad where McCloskey can play as well as he did against Italy and and, and lose his place, essentially. <clears throat> but the team comes first. And I think that selection reflects that. OK, let's move on to the bench where, uh, I mean, no surprises here now. <laughs> As we kind of already talked about all of this, like the 60s split <laughs> being the big, big change. Now, my question is, is this tactical in terms of he thinks it's going to be very forward heavy and therefore wants six forwards? Is it the the forwards that he's got available are better than the backs he's got available? Therefore, he's going to have six of them rather than three backs. I think it might be more the latter. You know, I think there's there's fewer backs that could come onto the bench and he feels could really do a job. Um, but what do you think? Yeah, well, I, th- I think certainly uh, in keeping uh, Crowley at 10, I think he's got to do that. Uh, if you move Crowley out, then the options open up all over the place because he can bring Byrne in, right? So, um, but I just think he wants to back that player and keep that consistency going. Um, but it does leave us massively exposed. I think he probably does think it's going to be quite... I haven't seen the forecast. Um, I think it's going to be okay. Um, maybe a bit windy. Uh, but I just think he knows, you know, as I kind of opened up the the, the, the pod with, is that, you know, without, without being disrespectful to Wales, if, if Ireland play, each player plays to their potential, they are going to hose them. There's no, you just look at the form in, in, the, in the URC. Um, and... You know, you, you look at quality level or under our head, you look at um, uh, sort of current form, you'd have to, to say that as well. And then also experience. Right? We just, you know, Wales are in complete rebuild phase um, uh, and they're not expected to do anything. And, you know, they can try a few things and go for it. But in terms of experience, so I just think, you know, pressure rugby, that's a 60 split, very much a South African way of going about it. Um, but I take your point, it could be, it could be that we've got less less backs to 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 bring in. I mean, there was chat about Zebo coming in uh, last week, but that that got very much put to the back um, fairly quickly. But um, yeah, and uh, but but you see, me saying all that makes me really worried because Wales with nothing to lose and being talked down by people like me is is the most dangerous Wales in the world because we know what they can do. We've seen it uh, against Scotland, and that's probably why. Uh, Farrell won't want an open game. He won't want us to play like Scotland did, throwing it around, because we saw what they did in the second half. So I think we'll want to be really, really tight, hence probably why he's gone for a 6-2. Yeah, the um, I completely agree. And and that's why we love the Six Nations, right? Because it feels like Ireland are definitely going to win this game, but we know nothing is ever certain. Mm-hmm. The other person that we want to pick up on here is uh, Oli Jaeger coming in potentially for his first cap at tight head. A big man, spent seven years down in New Zealand, apparently got Dutch Irish parents and was born in London as well. Uh, what do you know about Mr. Jaeger? Well, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Um, I've, I've seen him play uh, uh, highly thought of in Munster. Uh, he is a big, big lad. Like he's he's super big. Uh, and, you know, he, he did all right down in the, um, in the Crusaders, as I said, down in NZ. So um, clearly he's got a bit about him. Uh, I, I would think they probably. Fogarty probably has seen something in Wales. We've spoken about as well. How how good are those props on the bench coming in, and and, and what their depth is like there, and maybe they feel they can really go at them in that in that thing. Um, but he's also great in the loose as well. So um, yeah, he's a big old boy, TT, big lad. 
Yeah, I just wonder, I'm just wondering about Bielham, whether I, I haven't heard whether he, is he injured, potentially got a, a slight knock, I, I don't know, or whether is this a tactical choice to get Jaeger into the squad and to get him playing and get him experience? I don't know the answer to that. I'd love to find out. Yeah, I know he, he had a cut, didn't he, in the, in the last game and he, he took a bang maybe to something going on with that. Um, I hadn't heard that, um, but... Um, He's been playing Jaeger. I mean, Jaeger was 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 doing really well then, had an injury, and and maybe would have been in the squad earlier. Maybe they're happy now where he is, where his where his levels are. Um, I know he did a good game the other day, so let's see. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's move on to Wales. Here we go. This is exactly the same forward pack that started the previous game against England, and I think. As a pack, they did fantastically well when all these players were on the pitch. So no surprise to me that he's gone with exactly the same team. What do you see in this forward pack, Elko? How do you think they're going to approach the game? Um, well, I, th- I think they've got to break it up um, and you know make it as probably scrappy as possible. Although I, I do think they'll probably play how we expect them to play. I don't, I don't, I don't think any there's going to be a lot of barbarian stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> until it breaks up in the second half, potentially. Um, so presumably they'll want to they'll want to run this Irish pack around and keep it keep it fairly fluid. Um, I think they're for me. What stands out is their is their back row, particularly seven and eight. Um, I think they're two brilliant, brilliant players, um, and, and stand out massively. Um, but they're a little bit. I think they're a bit a little bit lightweight. Um, and um, that's where they might they might struggle. They, they'll need to be clever in line out. And they'll need to be clever stopping the Irish mall, be that um, either competing in the air and, and give Ireland a scare, which they haven't had yet, um, or um, sort of sacking it quite early on uh, with, with someone sort of designated to, to, to try and get that mall down quickly. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think if Wales are going to stand any chance in this game, it's going to have to start with disrupting everything Ireland do up front in the set piece and then onwards and onwards and onwards throughout all the phases of the game. So these guys are going to have a huge job to set that tone at the start of the game, particularly on Saturday. OK, into the backs. Uh, Costello coming back in for Johan Lloyd is the only change from the previous game. And again, I thought these, I thought the backs played really well for a half. And, and actually, they, you know, the game turned very differently in the second half. So they weren't all that relevant at, uh, at Twickenham. But if they can get in, Tompkins is so niggly. North is powerful and gets around. Are they going to have to do all of that constantly on Saturday? I think. Yeah, uh, I like this backline a lot, um, and I like the fact that Gatland has, has stuck with us. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of his um, in terms of his man management. I think he he he, he goes well, as long as he's not there too long. I think after four or five years, he'll probably get bored of it. But um, yeah, I, I think bringing Costa, he, you know, he, he's obviously recovered back from from his whiplash or whatever he had. Um, I love that Winnet is, is, you know, they're keeping faith in him, a young kid who looks who looks quality. Yeah, and and Tompkins is is very niggly, and you think, well, I mean, on paper, or if you see them stood beside you, you just go, Aki's going to run over this kid all day long, you know. But but he is, you know, he, he punches way above his weight, uh, and he is niggly, and and will, will will cause issues. But they've got a lot of um, they, this this um, backline can unlock defenses, um, and. You know, we we spoke around before around uh, uh, Henshaw, who, who has played particularly well uh, the last last couple of games. I still think an outside break in him is quite interesting, and if you have someone the size of North that can keep him in, interested, maybe as they hit the edge, North comes in on a strong line, and then they put you know put somebody at the back in Winnet or or a, or, a, or a winger, um, that could be really really interesting, and they could they could unlock uh, the Irish defence there. But it it just means the pack of got to try and get them some some uh, some ball to do this with yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna double down again on Tompkins there i think if wales are going to stand a chance he's going to be a really really key player in getting in and amongst the island side onto the bench and uh the only real change here is mackenzie martin coming in as back row <laughs> uh back row replacement Who's a really popular young man in Wales by all accounts? He's a, he's a he's a proper good lad, so people are very happy that he's he's getting a chance this weekend. But I mean, we talked about the prop replacements. It's actually Domichowski that Jaeger is going to play against, and I, I oh. rate Domichowski. Yeah, I, I think he's a, I think he's a good player. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that scrum battle goes later in the game. Yeah, I, I guess the the beauty for for 
but well, both teams, but in particular Ireland, uh, with, with with how much control they have in their players and stuff, the amount of stats and video they'll have on that on him through the URC will be will be loads. And you know, maybe they've seen something where Jaeger's gone against him before and, and looked at it. But um, you know, Wales got a wily old um, boards coach there who will, who will, who will you know limit that. But he is he is a good player, isn't he? Domchowski, he he played particularly well the other, the other week in the first game. Um, so yeah, it'll be, I mean, the, the, you know, this, 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 uh, well, a team, but certainly the bench, it kind of shows you where Wales are at. Like you look at that and you go, I don't know any of these kids, you know, uh, really let's, let's be frank. And, but that's okay because in four or five years time, we'll, we'll be a completely different conversation, you know, um, and where Ireland will be probably on a, a different phase and, and lots of players retiring, these kids will be all coming through and playing particularly well. Yeah, I mean, OK, we've kind of talked about this a lot throughout the selections, but how do we think the game's going to go? I think Ireland are going to play, as you say, their typical style. You know, they're going to play lots and lots of options, and that means in terms of passing options, in terms of kicking options, everything. Um, and I think Wales have just got to get in and amongst it, disrupt everything, and then when the game breaks up, and it probably will at some point, they've got to really nail their chances, <clears throat> which they did at Twickenham well. One in particular, they missed another one, mm. which might have won them the game. But they've got the players that can do that. And if they're going to win, they're going to have to take every single opportunity they that they manage to get. Yeah, and, and this is, you know, it, in a way, it's a, it's a test for Ireland and, and, and where they believe they are in the pecking order in world rugby. And, you know, really, I, I expect them to to be ruthless and robotic and maybe a little bit boring for people. Um, but, you know, I'll be surprised if they're, you know, de depending on weather and what happens at the start and, and people's header in the game, uh, you know, they'll, they'll probably get a bonus point before half time. Um, we see Leinster doing it all the time um, where they're just ruthless. They know that when they get inside the 22, it's going to be pick and go. It's going to be a penalty kick to the corner, maul. Um, but, you, you know, you don't know. The, the, Ireland could kick off, goes to north. There could be a breakaway try in the first minute, and then all of a sudden, you know, um, what they say the best best lay plans are there until you get punched in the nose. Um, and I, I don't be, I'm, I hate, you know, Six Nations to me means comp competitiveness, and um, you know, all teams should be on a level. But the reality is that's not where this where we are with this. Um, and I think uh, if Ireland get a good start, it could be a long day. Um, at the office because if they're too far ahead by the time that the, the, the game breaks up, which we know Ireland will not want the game to break up, they will be playing tight then, you know uh, the, the, the current will probably be green uh, rather than red towards the end Yeah, I guess the blueprint really <clears throat> potentially for Wales is the way England got into Ireland um, at the Aviva last year uh, before Freddie Stewart's red card they were right in that game and I think I'm not sure if they were ahead but they potentially could have been <clears throat> ahead when that happened Right. Prediction times, Elko. What scores have you got? How, how many do you think Ireland are going to win by? Uh, <clears throat> I've got two, Dan. I've got, I've got, <laughs> oh, I just don't want to get pummeled. Uh, but I know our Irish brethren are, are very, <laughs> are very, very punchy at the moment, aren't they? Zamboni. Um, <laughs> Ireland by eight. That's what I'm going to go for. Ireland by eight. I'm being. <laughs> Cautious, being cautious. That's not what you think. Um, I am going much higher than that. I think it's going to play out as we've described, and I'm going to go 36 12. I think Wales will get a couple of scores, a couple of tries, but I think Ireland will be dominant and uh, and get the bonus point as well. Yeah, yeah. so my, my other score, just to prove, was uh, plus 23. I don't know if you can see that down <laughs> my notes, but plus 23. I think the book, like I know, uh, I was just something else, and the bookies have gotten plus 25 or something. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. You go. Listen, okay. you get, could be food poisoning Friday night. You just don't know. Never know. Okay, people at home, that's what we think. But have we got it right? Do you think there's anything that we've missed? Any key matchups? Any players that you think are going to play a pivotal role that we haven't mentioned? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a good old chin wag. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. It just leaves me to thank Elko once more. Thank you, mate. Thanks, CT. Enjoy the game. Thank you. And people at home, you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.